Hello class, today we're going to go over a tutorial uh, for chapter 9.3 uh, homework section. This is on the paired sample t-test. So to get a quick intuition first about how this is different than the previous t-test, when we had a one sample t-test, we were really just looking at if uh, the average of some data x bar was greater than, uh, less than, or not equal to some claim being y, right? When we had two sample, we were really interested in if one group in particular, so let's say this is the mean of group one, was uh, greater than or less than, greater than, or not equal to uh, the mean of some group two, right? So it doesn't, it's just one group versus another group. A paired t test is looking at. Uh, really the exact matching between one person within a group or uh, a, at one time point to an, an, a, a precise pair in another group or another time point. So this can be between individuals. So if I'm looking at person one versus person one uh, of group one versus group two, or if I'm looking at the same person across two time points. So if this is time one, I'm looking at person one at time point one, to in the difference of whatever measure we have there, to person one at time point two, which is sometime into the future. And so what's specific about paired sample t-tests is that I cannot compare, you know, person one at time one to person two at time two, right? I cannot do that. Same as if I have a precise pair between uh, individuals, like so there's a question in here about uh, the height of a president versus their opponent. I wouldn't be able to compare a presidential candidate at one election to the presidential candidate uh, or opponent at a different election, right? That wouldn't make any sense. I'm looking specifically about the exact comparison, uh, perhaps between specific people or during a certain time and that's why they have to be paired and so I'm looking really at uh, if I have uh, you know one group here and another group here and I have all of these matches you know across my groups right and I'm really looking at looking at the differences between them right so the mean of the differences here and if that is greater than less than or not equal to whatever my alternative hypothesis is and most of the time that's going to be zero okay so let's jump into the homework now that will hopefully we have some intuition about how this is a little bit different so uh, the first question here this is we have temperature here so this is uh, between within individuals so each column here represents an individual and their temperature in Fahrenheit taken at 8 a.m. and then again at 12 a.m. And what we're interested in is if that temperature changes uh, significantly um, between these two time points here. So I can't take this temperature from this individual and compare it to the temperature of this other individual. That wouldn't make sense. I'm just going to be looking down the columns. That's the only thing I'm going to be doing. And so to be able to answer this question, I can again uh, at least for the mean of the differences, open it up in stat crunch. And I can go to stat. Uh, da, 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 the fastest way to do this. All of these statistics are going to be done in stat, t stats paired. Column one, column two. It's going to be important to get them in the right columns. Summary stats compute. The mean of the differences is minus 0 0.3 so uh, on average the temperature uh, drops about 0.3 degrees and then it asks for the standard deviation I have 0.46 here you see that this is the standard error so it's not uh, this is different than what the standard deviation is but you can uh, calculate the standard deviation from the standard error the way that you do that is if you remember standard error is the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of the n. So uh, in order to be able to find out the standard deviation from the standard error, you just switch it on to the other side, 
times the square root of the n, and that would equal the standard deviation. Uh, and that's the way that I did it. Another way to do it, which is a little bit, um, that doesn't involve any math, uh, just a couple of functions. StatCrunch doesn't have this uh, easily available, so I'm going to do it in Excel. I'm going to open it up in Excel. I'm basically going to say, okay, I'm going to look at uh, this cell minus this cell. So I'm going to calculate all my differences. I'm going to drag that formula down to all of them. And then in the cell and below that, I'm going to look at standard deviation. And I'm going to highlight all of my differences. Click Enter. And there I have my standard deviation of 0.46. That's what I have here. And that's the answer. Okay, moving on. I think another important one is question three. So here I've already established my... Um, uh, what my hypothesis is. This is again looking at president and from their opponent. So I wouldn't be able to look at this president and this opponent because they did not go up against each other. So what I'm more interested in is just looking at uh, president to their opponent, their specific opponent. So uh, that makes this paired. Again, so I'm going to again import this data into StatCrunch. I'm going to do tat, stat, t stats paired president versus opponent. I'm going to do, and that's my, this is actually going to be greater than, okay, make sure you catch yourself there. Standard deviation, my t-stat is around to two decimal places, 0.5. My p-value is 0.320. And then you can fill in the rest. The next question we'll go to is question five. Here I've done it again. This is before and after. So looking within the same individual across all time, across uh, one time point, uh, across many individuals. So I'm going to again do this really quickly. Open in stat crunch. There's more data here. Stat, T stats paired before after right you wouldn't do after then before you would get something different double checking my hypothesis this would affect the p-value if I had it as being equal than instead of greater than because it would make it go from a one tail to a two tailed test my t stat is 2.11 fantastic my p-value is 0.029. Fantastic. Okay. And you can complete the rest. Okay. Jumping forward. So here, how do we calculate a confidence interval uh, when we have data that paired data? You can, again, do that in StatCrunch. I've opened it up here. I'm going to go to Stat, T-Stats, Paired. I'm going to go to Before, After. I'm going to change this to just my 95%. That's what it's asking for here. I don't know the hypothesis or anything, so I don't have to um, worry about if this is greater than or less than, if this is a one-tailed or two-tailed, which would change the level here. So I'm just gonna go with what they say. If you have uh, more questions about uh, how you change this depending on if it's a one-tailed or two-tailed test. I did a previous tutorial on how to do that, so please check that out, and that will help out tremendously, I hope. I'm going to compute lower limit, minus 0.69, upper limit with rounding, 3.92. That's the correct answer. Okay, moving on to our last question now. For this tutorial, we have... Uh, already established what our hypothesis is. We know our significance level is 0 0.05. Lots of data now. I'm going to import it into StatCrunch. I'm going to go do the same thing we've done before. So you notice, noticed here that there is no summary. All of these stats have to be done with the data because we have to know what the differences are between each individual. You can't just take the average of one group and the other group as a summary and then figure it out. All right, that looks good. Very long output. 
T stat very significant, looks like. Minus 7.25. And my p-value, I can basically just put in 0 0.000. You can also put in 0 0.001. Uh, it gives you that kind of margin of error because you can never have a p-value of exactly equal to zero. It always has to be some type of uh, number. Okay, so I hope that helps on how to use StatCrunch to solve the paired t-test problems in homework chapter 9.3. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.